Greetings to you, my viewer. I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring the message of the Lord to you this morning from Mombasa, Kenya. I welcome you to fellowship with us and to hear the message that God has for us. And uh, this morning, um, I thank God. Wherever you are, please uh, let us pray together so that we may share the word of God. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you to worship you and to thank you and to honor you because you have been faithful to us and you are a loving and everlasting Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to share your word even through this media and how I pray for anyone that is listening to me and anyone that will hear this message that it will bring an impact, it will bring transformation and that Father, you will touch somebody through this word in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for anyone that is wounded that by the power of your spirit you will heal every wound in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be with us, Lord. Use me as a vessel that is available to be used of you. I I release myself to you and I humble myself before you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen, amen, amen. Um, this morning, my viewer, I am bringing the message that God has put in my heart uh, uh, from the book of Genesis, chapter 34, verse 1 to 31. And the second uh, scripture that we'll be looking at is 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 1 to 39. And I will also be looking at Genesis chapter 1, uh, continuing the story of creation. And the theme of my message this morning is Wounded Beauty. We have a program on YouTube called Wounded Beauty. And uh, if you look it up, you will find it. But the message today is Wounded Beauty. Now, um, according to several dictionaries, the definition of a wound as a noun, it is an injury to a living tissue, which is caused by a cut, a blow, or other impact, typically one which the skin is cut or broken. So it is um, an injury to a living tissue, and it can be caused by a cut, a blow, or any impact. And it is one that the skin is cut or broken. That is a noun as a wound. As a verb, uh, we say it is to inflict a wound on. It is to injure. It is to hurt, to damage, harm, maim, mutilate, disable, incapacitate, to scar, to lacerate, to cut, to scratch, to gash, to tear, or even to tear apart. All those are words that are used when we are speaking about a wound. And this morning we are talking about wounded beauty. So then again, when we talk about beauty as a noun, it is a combination of qualities such as shape, color, or form that pleases the aesthetic senses, especially the sight. Something that is beautiful and nice to behold, something that you want to look at. It can be either because of the shape, it can be because of the color, it can be because of, be because of the form, or even sometimes because of character. We say that someone's character is beautiful because it is something that is uh, that pleases not just the eyes, but also the heart. As an adjective, we say it is something good good, something excellent, used as a general term of approval, the word beauty. And when we look at uh, the book of Genesis, uh, chapter number one, which is the first book of the beginning, it's called the book of beginnings because everything begins in Genesis. When you look at the book of Genesis, you will see that in the beginning, the world was void and nothing was existing. It was dark and void. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth. And then, the, then God said in chapter one and verse number three, God said, let there be light. In in that darkness, in the midst of the darkness and the formlessness, God's voice spoke and said, let there be light. And there was light. And verse 4 says, and it was good. In other words, it was beautiful. Light is beautiful. And then he said, let there be sea and the dry land, and it was good. And God created the creatures of the water, the dry land. He created the birds of the air each in its own kind, all the different kinds of birds that exist in the world. And the Bible says it was good. 
Then verse number 27, God creates mankind. He said, let us make man in our own image and likeness to be fruitful, to fill the earth, to subdue, to rule over. That is why man was created in the image and in the likeness of God to do those things that I have mentioned earlier, that he was created, number one, to be fruitful. You were created to be fruitful. The initial purpose of God for creating you was that you become fruitful, that you multiply and fill the earth, that you subdue, that you rule over. And then when you read verse number 31, it says that all that he had created, it was very good. Everything that God created was very good. In other words, it was very beautiful. In other words, there was no fault in anything that God created. He looked at it on the seventh day. He rested. I believe he rested admiring everything that he had created, looking at the hills, the mountains, the valleys, the waterfalls, the rivers, the seas, the oceans, and everything. And God saw that it was very, very good. Praise the name of the Lord. This sounds like a good story with a happy ending. But unfortunately, that is not the case. It is not like the stories where we say that, and they lived happily ever after. The story takes a twist again when you continue to read in chapter 3. The Bible says that now the serpent was more crafty than all the other wild animals created by God. After all that beautiful story of creation, the beautiful universe, the beautiful things that God had created, then chapter 3 talks about something, uh, the serpent that is crafty more than any other wild animals that God had created. And the story goes on. We know about the story of, uh, of, of uh, Adam and Eve and how the serpent came and deceived Eve. And they disobeyed God and they ate the fruit of the tree that they were told not to eat by God. Disobedience entered the world. As a result of that, when you read the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse number 15, you will see God speaking that now. He says, I, he says to the woman, I will put an enmity between you and your offspring and the, the offspring of the woman. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This is the story of the plan of the redemption of God since Genesis. I'm sure when the devil had that, that the seed of this woman would be the one to crush the head of the serpent. The serpent must have been very keen to want to know which seed of this woman is going to crush my head. If you know that the enemy is preparing to come and destroy you, you will begin to prepare yourself to counter attack or to prevent the attack from happening. So the serpent was very keen to try and find out and understand which seed of this woman is going to crush my head. The first children born to Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. We know the story of Cain and Abel that at the end of the day, one killed the other. Cain killed his brother Abel because of jealousy, because Abel was giving an offering that was more acceptable, and the jealousy entered, and uh, you know he planned in his mind, and he planned in his head, and he killed, actually murdered his own brother. So death entered the world because of disobedience. In the story that the verse that I mentioned earlier, uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 34, 1 and 31, 2 Samuel 13, 1 and 39, you will read the story of Amnon and Tamar, where he begins to get desires to sleep and have sexual relations with his own sister. With his own sister. He is so obsessed with her to a point that he pretended to be sick and raped his sister. The story again of Shechem and Dina, a beautiful foreigner in their land, 
instead of welcoming her together with the others and making them feel at home, they look at this beautiful girl. He looks at this beautiful girl as somebody who could become his wife by force. So he defiles, he rapes her. As a result of that, then he begins to ask for her hand in marriage. And the brothers pretend to play along and they say, in our tribe, we circumcise our men and you are not circumcised. And he tells them, we are going to become one with you. We will give our daughters in marriage to you on one condition, that your men become circumcised like we are. And everything that we own will become yours and we will also, we will become one, one team or one family. And the men of the land agree to be circumcised. And when they are circumcised, three days later, when the wound is still flesh, when they are, they are fresh, when they have, if they have not been healed, something happens. They come and slaughter and kill all the men in the land because they defiled their sister to protect the honor of their sister. And all the wealth of their land is taken away because of that act sin. Today, there is evil in the world. There is evil among sons and daughters of men. There is hatred everywhere. Nations fighting against nations. Some of the signs of the end time that God, that was spoken about in the Bible, we have seen them fulfilled in our very eyes. There is malice. There is murder. There is unfaithfulness. There is betrayal everywhere. Friends betraying friends. Betrayal. Sons betraying their fathers. Sons murdering their fathers because of land. That is very common. Children wishing for their parents to die early so that they can inherit what their parents have acquired over the years. A generation that is not willing to follow the process of things as ordained by God. A generation that wants to go by shortcut, become rich quickly, become wealthy quickly, become millionaires quickly. Corruption everywhere. People stealing money, even money that was meant for people who are sick in this pandemic of COVID-19. We have seen people stealing openly. And yet justice is delayed to take its course. Or those people are sanitized as the word is being used. And then they become holy and people begin to clap for them as if they are honorable members. There is evil in the world. I am sure, my viewer, one way or another you have experienced this evil that we are talking about this morning. Maybe something was done to you. Remember that idea that was so brilliant you had, an idea for business, an idea for prosperity, an idea to do something. You shared them and then your friends cut you out and they implemented the idea without you. And now you see them moving and you are there feeling the bitterness in your heart because you know that they betrayed you. Remember how you trusted this person with your whole being and they betrayed you big time. And every time you think about the betrayal, every time you think about how you had trusted the person, how you had given yourself, your heart, your whole being to them, your heart bleeds within you because there is evil in the world. And that is why the Bible says that cursed be the man that puts his trust upon another man. But blessed is the man that puts his trust upon the Lord God. Because God will never disappoint you. God will never betray you. God will never hurt you. God will never leave you. He will hold you and walk with you until the end of age. It is a promise that we hold on to. That Jesus said to us before he left this world. That I will not leave you as orphans in this world. I will be with you until the end of age. Praise be to God. Were you betrayed and you gave up? 
and you feel like all is lost. There is no, you don't have the oomph to move on anymore. You no longer have the grace to continue. You no longer dream. I am here to tell you this morning by the mercies of the Lord that you can begin to dream again. It doesn't matter how low you are. You can begin right where you are and begin with small baby steps. You can dream again and your dreams are valid. Do not allow anyone to despise you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might because there is a God who, who hears. There is a God who answers. There is a God who does not judge you by the standards of the people of this world. The people in this world will look at your social status. They will look at your level of education. They will look at how well you can speak or how well you can dress. They will look at how much money you have in the bank or who you are connected to. But there is a God who looks into the hearts of men. There is a God who sees the hearts and the desires of men. And that God, when you begin to trust again, he will come through for you. Are you wounded? I remember one time, my son, when he was very young, and we were cooking chapati in the house, and I was rolling chapati. Those of you from Kenya and East Africa, you know chapati. Sometimes you roll the chapati on the frying pan. And as I was rolling, my son saw that that was a nice thing I was doing, like some kind of a game I was playing. And he decided to try and do the same. Before I looked at him, he was very fast. He had already touched the pan and his finger was burnt by the fire. My son cried with a lot of pain because of that finger. And every time he would walk with that finger, lifting it up, when the father came, he said, Daddy, my finger was burnt. When a visitor comes, my son would show them the finger and say, look at my finger. And the visitor will say, oh, so sorry, what happened? And he will begin to narrate the story. But something happened after a while, the finger got healed. But psychologically, my son did not forget the pain that he felt when he was burnt. So every time he would be disappointed by something else, maybe he would ask for something from the father, and the father would say, no, you cannot have that now. He would lift up that finger and begin to cry. And we would say, what is it, my son? And he would say, it is the finger that was burnt. But the truth of the matter, it is, not the, it is something else that has happened that has reminded him the finger that was burnt. What I'm trying to say is that when you are wounded, you have two options to make. Number one, you can decide to remain in the place of being wounded, in the place of pain, in the place of thinking of what was done to you, in the place of seeing the people that did it to you and accusing them and feeling bad about them whenever you see them. Or you can choose to move on to a place where your wound begins to heal. When your wound heals, it becomes a scar. When you look at the scar, it should make you proud. You will be proud of your scars because you will say, yes, I was wounded. Yes, it was bad. Yes, it hurt bad, but I am no longer living in a place of pain. This scar reminds me that I am a strong woman. I am a strong man. I am a strong girl. I am a strong boy. I am a strong child because I have moved on. I have healed. I no longer live with a wound. It is a scar. God looked at all the wounds that we have in this world inflicted on us by people we care about, by people close to us, by people we trusted, people connected to us. And God wanted to heal our wounds. But it would only take a wounded person to understand the pain of a wound. And that is why God sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to come into this world and be like us in every way. To come into this world and experience the pain and the things that we experience. He was betrayed by his very own. He was rejected by his own. 
The Bible says that he came to his own and his own received him not. But to all those who accepted him, he gave them the power to become children of God. Children born not of the will of flesh or will of man, but by the spirit of the Lord. He came here. He experienced our pain. He experienced our lives. He was wounded for our sake. He was crucified a painful death. And you know what? One of the ways that we are going to identify him is when we see him on that day, he will show us his scars. He has scars and marks on his hand. He has scars and marks on his ribs where they pierced him. And we will touch the scars and we will know it's him. Hallelujah, the victorious Lamb of God who was wounded for our sins, for our transgressions. And because he was wounded, and because he has those scars, he bears the scars, the scars are a sign of victory. He is no longer in the grave. He is no longer hanging on that tree. He no longer has the nails through him. He no longer has the crown of thorns on his head. He is the victorious king of kings and the Lord of lords who sits at the right hand of God the Father interceding for you and I every day. I stand here today as a prophetic voice of God to speak to every man, every woman, every child, every young person out there that has been wounded and is contemplating suicide and life has no longer any value to them. I speak to you by the mercies of God and by the grace of God to rise up in the name of Jesus. Do not remain in the place of being wounded. Arise in Jesus' name for the light of God has come and the glory of God shines upon you. Viewers, in my time in ministry as a servant of God, I have experienced many people that have been wounded. I have seen many people that no longer wish to move on. I have seen many people that have lost the will and the desire. These are the people that I come to speak to today by the grace and by the mercies of God. Rise up. Get out of there. Keep moving. Even if you are not going to be able to run fast, just walk. Don't stay there. It is a dangerous place. It is a place of bitterness. It is a place of pain. It is a place of sorrow. I urge you by the mercies of God to get out of there and begin to move on and your scars can be turned into stars. That is why we have the program on YouTube, Wounded Beauty, where we say that we are turning scars into stars for the glory of God. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and praise and honor because you are the one that reigns and lives forever in glory. There is no God besides you. Father, we pray for each and every person that is hurting right now. For every person that is wounded right now. For every person that has nowhere and no one to turn to. Lord, you are there. You are there, Lord. May they feel the warmth of knowing and the assurance of knowing that you are right there. Anybody that is thinking about taking their own lives, anybody that locks themselves in the house the whole day because they no longer want to face the world. I pray for them this morning. By your power, by your grace. Lord, reach out and comfort your people. And they will not remain in the place of being wounded anymore. And they will begin to rise up with a little strength in them and move forward to where you are, Jesus. Thank you for the women and the men 
husbands and wives who have been wounded in their marriages. I pray that you will bring restoration and healing that is much needed. Even for those who have lost their loved ones and they continue to feel the pain whenever they remember them. Lord, I pray that you will comfort them today in Jesus' name. Thank you for those even parents that have been betrayed by their children and children who have been betrayed by their parents. I speak restoration today in the name of Jesus. I speak to people that have been wounded by their friends, people that have been frustrated and disappointed. Father, give them the strength to rise up and to move again. We bless your name and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, my viewers. God bless you for listening to this message. May the Lord keep you strong. May the Lord uphold you. And may he lead you to your destiny. Let it not be stolen from you, but keep focused. Keep praying and keep trusting. In Jesus' name, God bless you. What's up, Wounded Beauty family? I'm here today with uh, my brother here, Kevin. We're here to advertise this match merchandise. This is very good merchandise. You see this? This is world-class material. Yeah. Not even Trump has this. Yeah. Yeah. Hapa hivi vile bro kamesema, hii ni topa. Sawa, na niya mavijana, hii ni material kali sana. Hii topa manzei na kostu pesa kiasi. Ni 700, na jua maboyzi mune za Ford. Pinga nuki moja fresh hapa mtani. Ukipia uki to support kimpango. Pia hapa hivi kuna na kamu. Na chegi. Ini kikombe manze, manze, ime pigwa mbaka logo, pigwa pale pale manze, wounded beauty. Manze ina cost 2700, manze ni pesa uneza afford. Alafu bado kuna mambomba, ini tisho. Ini tisho ambayo ni lupoa, ina kufit. Ini natoka pia tao moja, ama ni aje bro. Najwa ni kitu uneza afford. Uneza kwa uki afford, uki baika moja pale online, manze, ama uki piga order, kuna wala ambao mkona namba yangu. Utapigia mbaka kwenye whatsapp, utapigia picha, utaziyeka kwenye whatsapp. Ukipata moja, manze utakume promote hii program, na God atakubless, ama niyaje kibraze. Wounded Beauty ni isho about people who have suffered through a lot to get where they are right now. Yeah. Ukiona mtu wako successful hivi na hivi, kuna vile amepitia, kuna hizo mashida, meona. So Wounded Beauty goes into their lives, the archives of what they have gone through. Yeah. So that you may be inspired by their testimonies. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, yani ni program ina del, na testimonies za watu, generally ni both genders, male or female. Ambapo unapo pata inakuwa interviewed, unapo tune in kwa TV yako, manze unacheki vile watu wamepitia life challenges ni kibao. Manze uneza ona hiyo challenge unapitia ineza kuwa ni kubwa sana kwa ako, lakini unapo ona vile watu wamepitia uneza, uneza jua kumbe mungu wana kupenda mana ile, ile yako ineza kuwa ni kiasi ya wale ambao, yani ukiona unajua eh, manze kuna watu pia wana, wana pitia na unapo yona pia ineza kupea motivation, ujua kwamba God wana kupenda, ukipon hard, working hard, mungu wa kupush through, alafu nawe pia ukuje u, utestify, ama ni aji, spige gota moja hapa, una jaribu tuku kueleze ya kusutu tu staff, manze pigia moja mbili tatu, alafu manze itakuwa po, itakuwa po asi. Uneza kwa unajiuliza uneza tupataje kwa platform za media, pale Facebook, kuna Unis, N, Intangasi, kwa Facebook, na kwa YouTube, bado utampata Unis, N, Intangasi, manze ukicheki pale kuna kakengele kana fanyafanyanga hivi pale kwa kona, ebu press, subscribe, na gota taku bless. If you have any inquiries about where to watch us, you can go to YouTube and search Unis and Indangasi and subscribe. You press that little red button there, you can subscribe. You also press the notification bell. It looks like a little bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos we may post. Don't forget to like also. Mm. That's very important. Don't forget to like. You can also go straight to Facebook and watch it from the same, same channel, Unis and Indangasi. You can like and follow, and also don't forget to check in on our sister channel from Pastor Fred in Nangasi, uh, pro The Promise of Hope. Yeah. Thank you very much. Na kumbuka hii program inakuja every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Kenyan. 
time. God bless you.